It's the Agribusiness Report. I'm Tony St. James, and we're joined today by the Honorable Senator Dr. Roger Marshall from Kansas. And I, I can't say the big first district of Kansas anymore <laughs> because it's the entire state. Yeah, yeah, Tony, it's great to see you again. Uh, like you said, we were, the last time we saw each other, we were over on the house side and I was trying to fill in some big shoes over there. And now I got even bigger boots to fill. Um, if your listeners are, are watching, they're gonna see that I got my Ag Hall of Fame pennant on today. Uh, in Wyandotte County is the National Agriculture Hall of Fame and Senator Pat Roberts, one of my heroes, was recently inducted there. And boy, I hope your listeners get a chance to stop by the Hall of Fame. I don't know about you, but I grew up, my brother and I grew up, one of our fun things to do is we would go to the, my grandpa's junkyard of old thrashers and all of this old machinery, and we would get on, the, on it and pretend like we're using it and trying to fix it and what it would take to make it work. But to go back in time and see some of that old machinery they had there just brought back great, great memories of the times I had growing up on the farm. And you mentioned, uh growing up on the farm and, and remembering those times, uh, probably a good opportunity for me to ask you what's happening in the state. And there, obviously ag is a huge part of the state, but uh, you also have other industry, but what's happening back home? Well, you know, from, from the ag side of thing, it is still the number one economy for the state of Kansas. As agriculture goes, so goes Kansas. Even the Kansas City Metro, over 20% of their economy is related to agriculture. Uh, the reason they had the second largest train depot in the country is because it's full of those ag products, a lot of them made in, in my home area out there in the big first district. Uh, so we got great prices, that's the good news. We have $8 wheat, $12 beans, but the bad news is because of inflation, we have high input cost and that's not unique to Kansas. But when I'm going back and talking to my producers, that's what they're talking about it. So think about it, fuel costs are up 60%, uh, fertilizers have tripled, and the herbicides, insecticides up a multiple of six right now. So again, we got good news, we got great prices, but boy, trying to grow next year's crop is really challenging. And the other, uh, you know, two other pieces of the puzzle, folks are now getting concerned about transporting uh, those products out of Kansas. Uh, you know, this the trucker issue shortage going all the way to California. A lot of our stuff is shipped by train, but then it gets clogged up there on the ports. Um, so those are some of the big concerns for folks back, back home right now would be just these inflationary costs and getting our products out. And then, you know, we probably should talk a little bit about regulations if you want to. No one's really spending a lot of time worried about the regulations, but we're seeing WOTUS, Endangered Species Act, starting to, to rear their ugly head again as well. You know, you, you mentioned regulations and you mentioned the driver shortage. Uh, recent hearing on the House side a lot of concern from the Truckers Association on mandates for vaccines. Yeah. Is that, uh, does that fit into this conversation? You know, absolutely. Let's think about how vaccine mandates are gonna impact agriculture. When you say the word vaccine mandate, think inflation because the vaccine mandates are gonna impact every industry in this nation. A third of every industry, I don't care whether it's the Department of Labor up here in Washington, D.C., or if it's a truck driving operation, at least a third of their workers are not vaccinated yet. That's gonna cause further uh, supply chain disruption, right? Which is gonna drive up prices. And think about just your FSA offices and your NRSC offices as well, that a third of those people aren't vaccinated. I encourage people to get the vaccine. I support the vaccine. I've had the vaccine. My grandparents, my, because my parents have had the vaccine. I'm thinking about my grandparents this morning, obviously. It's Thanksgiving time, and, uh, but uh, my parents have had their booster shots, but there's a group of people that aren't gonna get it. And that's why I'm up there fighting for Kansans, fighting for Americans to stop the mandate, to stop the federal mandate. We have legislation that we'll be putting forward uh, to stop any funding for OSHA to implement this mandate. Also trying to do a couple congress congressional review acts as well to stop it. So we're gonna use every tool we can to stop the mandates. But again, encourage your listeners uh, to consider the vaccine. Go talk to your doctor if you're concerned about it. And I uh, threw in the fact that uh, you're a senator, but you're also a physician as well and so when you bring that information you you bring you bring some background with it but if you don't mind let's go back over to the the regulatory side because uh, congress can write laws but at the end of the day it's how is it implemented 
You mentioned waters of the U.S. There's some serious concerns right now that uh, there's there's just uncertainty. Yeah, I exactly. So everyone, you know, grab your wallets because here it comes again. We saw the Obama administration expand waters of the U.S. Uh, President Trump sh sh shrank those rules, and now it's going to be expanded more than President Obama. Here's the frustrating thing, Tony. Again, and I'm thinking of my grandparents today, I remember them building terraces for soil conservation purposes. I remember them doing it with their own tractor and uh, my granddad bought a bulldozer even, an old used bulldozer and my dad knew how to operate it. Uh, but now we want to be regulated. The water that runs off those terraces, the federal government wants to regulate it. Um, look, I want to leave this world cleaner, healthier, and safer than I found it. We're going in the right direction. Agriculture is doing amazing things out there. Everywhere I go across the state of Kansas, new agriculture practices. We're grabbing methane gas from, uh, from uh, the hog productions and turning it into some type of a renewable biodiesel product. Uh, we're using less and less water. Uh, everybody is doing a great job. We're moving in the right direction, but we don't need the, ha the heavy hand of the federal government coming in and driving up uh, the cost of doing business with minimal return back on that investment. I think the, the last one here for you, uh, Kansas is obviously a large wheat growing state, sorghum, uh, but livestock as well. And, and yeah. you mentioned uh, the hog farms and the methane there, but just looking at the, the livestock industry, uh, overall, what do you see coming down the road over the next uh, six months to a year? Well, certainly we're seeing better prices uh, there for my, my farmers and ranchers, the people that are doing the cow-calf operations. But I, uh, probably the, the one industry that's not recovered are those small producers and the small feedlots. You know, we have the challenge up here across the nation. We have three, four packing plants that dominate the industry, and they've had their own challenges, creating supply, uh, supply blockage, a, l a lack of employees. Uh, the federal mandate's gonna make that worse as well. So we, we didn't have the capacity for a while to take in the beef that we, we had available. Um, it looks like we are getting some better prices now. I do expect the federal government, the Justice Department, to be looking at some lawsuit issues to see if there's oligomonopolies out there that are over-dominating the market. I'm still very concerned that, uh, that enough of that dollar is not getting back to the people that are out there delivering those baby calves this past winter, freezing their tails off, uh, trying to keep that mama cow alive. Uh, and those sm small feedlots and the, the, the um, the, the auction houses, like I grew up working, spending my weekends working at a cell barn uh, from the time I was almost 16. I lied about my age to start so I could help my brother. But every weekend in high school and through community college, I worked out at the cell barn. And the people that own that cell barn now, the people that are third, fifth generation small feedlot operators are telling me there's only three or five buyers showing up. Uh, so something's got to be done up here. It's about to come to a head. I don't want to see us overreact though. Something times the, the worst thing the federal government can do is overreact and start price fixing and quota fixing. So I, I really do expect here over the next month or two uh, for this issue to come to a head. I wish I could sit here, Tony, and tell you, here's the solution. Here's the exact solution. What I do know, if there was more competition, if there was more packing plants out there, it would be helpful. And no matter what the rules, we change them. Big, big companies can figure out ways to get around it. So I'm doing everything I can to make it easier for more uh, meat packing plants to enter the industry and also to be able to sell that meat across state lines. Uh, quick story, recently we hosted an event for the Capitol Police up here. And I wanted to bring in brats from Ellenwood Packing Plant. Some, a family from my church has owned that for decades, and we bought all our we buy all our beef there. We have a every year I get a steer from our from our grassland, and we butcher it, and they they pack it for me. And uh, they can't sell. Long story short, they can't sell these brats across state lines. So even though I would go there and pay for it in person, they couldn't ship it here. So I'm taking my little uh, cooler, my little handheld cooler, and bringing back uh, 230 brats, about 60 at a time, from Kansas back here. So we, we want to keep our food supply safe and healthy, of course, but I think there's some things we can make it easier for those small packing plants to make a living. So good to see you. Thanks for all the work you're doing here and uh, for uh, continuing the, the tradition of representing agriculture from Kansas. We wish you the best. And Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks, Tony. Great to see you. Again, it's the Honorable C. 
Senator Roger Marshall from Kansas on today's Agribusiness Report.